Eric Osadolo, welcome. Victoria Salau, Shigo Mwafo, Daniel Atsenga, Shegun Fatumo. Yomi Jegede, Benny Gift, welcome. Rochelle White, welcome. Shigo, is it me you are asking the question? How am I this evening? Is that directed at me or at everybody? Olukayo de Kundayo, Daniel Oshoma. Uh, Elizabeth Ali, welcome. Olukaye de Kondaye again. Anu Ojo, Eric Lindu, Jacob Sale, Flair Karim Matib, good evening. Elizabeth Ali, Daniel Asonga, Daniel Adelike, Victoria. Again, Amani, looking great. Thank you. If if I in Shuku Pascal. Oh, okay. Shigo is talking to me actually. Hmm. Wow. What a pleasant surprise. Thank you. How am I this evening? How will I answer that question? I think I've been great, really. I think I've been great. Uh, yep. Working hard, but good and great. Thank you for your care. T.Y. Moore, Shinwe Ananaba, uh, Justin Mayo, Falashade Kikelomo, Bobo, Katia Argirova, Hello, Adeola Disu, Shao Smith, <laughs> Edwin Amin, me, uh, Ulukayo De Bidemi. <laughs> so Shinwe, you love the shirt. I almost changed that shirt. I was not convinced it was going to be nice, but <laughs> you give me the you are confirming that it was the right choice then. <laughs> All right. Lilia Besley, good evening. Now you speak in English, Lilia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody. Let's keep on, let's go ahead and share the link. And let's do that fast and on time so that uh, the other people that don't know where we are uh, will be able to find us. So let's quickly go and invite our friends and other people that we know. Let's write some interesting things. Let's write some appealing words to them so that they will be able to know that this is important for them to come along and, jo along and join us. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and invite everyone that we know, that we care for. And we'll be ready to go. <laughs> Ty, you think you think I look cute? Thank you for that. Thank you. La Yosha Simanuel, hello. Blessing. Pearl David is back. For Lasha Day is thinking I look sharp. Wow, you <laughs> okay now. I, I, I think I'm going to tune down with my dressing taste. So that uh, less attention will go to that, I guess. Okay, here we go. Our topic for today is what your wife is expecting from you. What your wife is expecting from you. What your wife is expecting from you. I think this should be interesting for every man to know, at least every man that cares about his family and his, his, the well-being of his home, and uh, his family should you know, be interested in this topic. What your wife is expecting from you. What your wife is expecting from you. <laughs> uh, this series is going... <laughs> it's a pity that Facebook doesn't want to put us on the big Facebook platform. Otherwise, this series was supposed to be a big one. This series was supposed to go just wild, like, you know, like wildfire. But no problem. We are going to manage what we have. And we all have to do a hard work. We need to do uh, some hard work to spread the word. 
so that you know this series will not be limited to just about 100 people that will be here today and uh, you know most likely more people will need to hear these words most likely more people will need to hear these words okay all right i think you people have shared the link already hope everybody has shared the link if you have not shared it please go ahead okay Lyo is saying pastor please wait let us share uh the link before you start to give us a few more minutes okay so let's quickly go and share the link and write some good comments and uh, so as to, for people to know what to expect so the topic of today what your wife is expecting from you <laughs> is there any man there that will be interested interested in knowing what their wives will be is expecting from them maybe you are not married yet maybe you have a girlfriend what is it that your wife is expecting from you and not just your wife but any woman that you have in your life i think women are basically the same they expect the same thing and like i said in the beginning of the week that if you are a man you are supposed to give some of these things apart from the intimacy part you're supposed to give a lot of these things to women around you and to be a factor of blessing and a factor of stability to all ladies around you and some of the things I'm going to talk about today uh, there are things that you need to give to your daughters and you need to give to your friends and to your sisters and to your mother even and to other ladies that are in your life so what are your wife what is it that your wife is expecting from you all right so what what your wife is expecting from you what is it that your wife is expecting from you I mean I've been talking about this since monday so if you miss some of this you might want to go back and listen to uh to the ones you have missed and you might want to also you know follow because we are going to talk about this till the next month till next monday now the point that i want to the, the first point i want to make i want to try as much as possible to make as many points as possible right what is a wife expecting from the husband listen your wife is somewhere there on the level of her subconsciousness she might not even voice it to you maybe she's not even thinking about it maybe she's not even thinking about it because you know there are a lot of things going on in our subconscious that we might not even have contemplated maybe we have not even thought about and we've not we've not um, we will not even admit that we are thinking about these things but um, this point I'm about to make now some women have contemplated and have thought about this but most women will say they don't care for it maybe they don't but it will still be good for you to know I think every woman is somewhere silent maybe silently or openly somewhere somewhere she's expecting the man in her life and you know the man in her life doesn't have to be her husband the man in her life could be her father the man in her life could be her brother the man in her life could be a friend the man in her life could be the person that she sees as a father figure all right so but we are talking about you know relationship this week so i'll just use wife so every wife every woman every girlfriend every lady is expecting that that man in his in her life would somehow help her to discover herself and come to fulfillment in life it's a kind of a giving is a kind of a natural thing sometimes the ladies might not really voice this out but in within herself she's thinking if you are a real man all right if you are a real man and if you call yourself a man and you say you are a man that you should know that 
you need to help me to discover myself. You should know that you need to help me to realize my dream. Every woman is expecting the man in her life to help her realize her dream or her dreams. It's just like, it's just kind of a natural kind of thing that you say you love me, you say you care for me, and you said I'm important to you. If I'm really important to you, and if I'm really who you say I am to you, if I hold that place in your life, it's supposed to be natural and elementary. I don't even need to tell you this for you to walk towards helping me come to my self-fulfillment and my self-realization. So if you are a husband and you have not thought about that and you think, and you are, I mean, there are some men that go about and tell the lady, what do you want? What do you want now? And you can do what you want. Hey, just go and do what you want. Uh, you know, women, uh, no matter how strong they are, even if she knows what she wants, all right? Even if she has the ability to do what she wants, she kind of wants to have uh, a support, an armrest, or so, somewhere, somebody near her where she could place her arms like this. Where on, on, she needs somebody to lean on. That's the right word. She needs a shoulder. She needs a shoulder. She needs a shoulder to lean on. Even though she knows what she wants, maybe, even though she might have, be strong enough to get it, but that's your support, eh? That's your support. Might just be that little strength, that little thing, that little thing that she needs. Don't you ever think that my wife is strong enough, my sister is strong enough, or my mother is strong enough, or my fiance is strong enough, she knows what she wants, she will just go, I don't need to. Mm, well, maybe she could have made it by herself without you, but then why are you in her life if she cannot rely on you? Then why are you there if she cannot fall back on you? Why are you there if she will not be able to lean on you? Why are you there if your shoulders are not there for her? Why are you there if you will not lend her your shoulder? If you will not lend her your hand? If you will not lend her your ears? If you will not lend her your voice? Sometimes she doesn't need the answer. She just needs your ears. For you to listen and, you know, give her that support. Give her that acknowledgement. Give her that affirmation. I will tell you a story today. Because there are some cases whereby the lady might actually tell you that she doesn't want to do anything. And she's not interested in anything. And, uh, but despite that, if you will be there for her. If you will be there for her. If you will show her enough support, that flower will blossom. That flower will blossom. That flower will blossom. That flower will blossom. You know, ladies sometimes could be like, um, you know the way flower grow, grows up? Flower is like a seed. First of all, that flower is in form of a seed. So when the flower is, a, is put on the ground, when the flower is in that soil, you don't see anything. So it could be like that with a woman. So a woman could be hidden. If you are just seeing her and you are thinking, oh, this one doesn't have any ambition. This one will never become anything. No, she doesn't, she doesn't have any ambition. She doesn't have any dream. She will not become anything. She, she's not interested. She's, she's, uh, she dis, she's disenfranchised. She's not. But you see, there is something that is called budding, bud, budding, budding. B U D D, budding, B U D. When the bird, the bird, the bird, the bird, the bird is coming up, that the burden of the flower will just begin to reveal itself from the underneath of the soil. 
and to just begin to crack that soil open. That is how a lady could be manifested. That is how beautifully a lady could come into manifestation and realization. So, so, so when she's not having the watering, when she's not having the environment, when she's not having the support, when she's not having the encouragement, she's just laying low in that soil. And you would never think that soil has got some seed in it. But with the right environment, with the right uh, sun, sunshine, with the right uh, watering, with the right irrigation, you know, that soil will begin to crack open. No matter how hard that soil has been, no matter how cemented that soil has been, no matter how, uh, it's, even if it has been uh, made into an asphalt, if you let the lady open up and you give her the necessary support for her to, that she could actually, she, when she be, begins to believe in herself, that she could actually come to realization, that she could come to self-fulfillment, that she could realize her dreams, oh, ideas will just begin to come. And, you know, things will just begin to pour out of her. Things will just begin to pour out of her. So that is one of the reasons why God allows men into the lives of women. God allows us into their lives to be able to open them up like that, to be able to crack that soil open, that dry soil, to be able to water it with your encouragement, to be able to water it with your support, to be able to water it with your love and your covering, so that you crack that, that, that soil open. And once that soil all cracks open, it begins to bud, bud out. And the budding begins to, it might be coming slowly at first. It might be coming, you know, you know delicately at first. But once that courage is there, and once that support is there, once that freedom is, is given, that burden will become bolder and more, more ele elegant and more, uh, more, you know, more extravagantly will be display the beauty of that flower. So, so, so women are like flowers, you know, in so many ways. Women are like flowers in so many ways. And uh, so... Uh, so even though she might be quiet, a quietness does not mean the absence of a, of, of, of a dream. Just like the, 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 the soil, the closeness of the soil does not indicate, does not mean the absence of, a, does not mean the absence of a seed. It, the, the fact that the, the soil, there's nothing growing on that soil, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that there is no seed there. The closeness, the silence, the quietness, the, 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 yeah, the silence of the soil does not mean that there is no, there is an absence of seed. Maybe the seed is right, lying quietly. Maybe the seed is lying low right now, lying low in that soil. And the same thing with a woman. Without any woman, she's got a dream in her. Any woman, she's got some passion in her. Any woman, she's got a destiny in her. Any woman, she's got some passion, some talent, some, and she needs the support of, you know, a supporting husband, a supporting partner, a supporting friend to be there for her, to encourage her, to give her the wings, and to make her to soar, and to bring forth her beauty as that beautiful rose and flower knows how to do. So I'm talking to the men. I'm talking to the men. So you guys, uh, I just want you to know that no matter who your wife is and no matter how strong or weak she is or how quiet she is, you might think, I'm, no, it's not about my wife. Well, if you get behind her, I'm not talking about getting behind her by pushing her. I'm not talking about getting behind her and say, oh, you can, you must, you can't. No, no. Let me tell you the story of my wife. Let me tell you the story of my wife. <laughs> when she, I approached her to, for marriage, she, uh, I guess maybe she, has, she liked me or so. I guess she might have liked me, okay? Maybe, but she didn't let me know anything about it. But I suppose she should, or she might. One day she will come here and tell us, and tell her own side of the story. But, uh, but one thing that I noticed when I told her, when I approached her, I told her my story, and uh, uh, when she got to know that I was a pastor, I think all the likeness that she had for me 
kind of diminished, if not disappeared. Because I later got to know that she <laughs> she resented the pastors and she didn't want to consider marrying a pastor at all. She pastor was not in her calculations and it was not in her dream. <laughs> and uh, so I guess the compromise and the way out was that she told me quite frankly that I don't have any intention to marry a pastor. Ooh, <laughs> I was convinced she was my wife. I was committed to marrying her. But so what should I do now? Do I need to pick my calling or I need to pick my love? So she's saying she is not convinced that I must, I mean, she, she wants to marry a pastor. And I am convinced she has to be my wife. And now the person I'm convinced should be my wife is telling me she doesn't think so because I want to become a pastor. So I ask her a question. If I'm not going to be a pastor, uh, will, you be, will you be open to marrying me as an individual? Okay, I'm a journalist. I was a journalist at that point. But I tell her, I told her that yes, I'm a journalist now, but eventually I have a calling upon my life and I'm going to become a pastor. And she said, no, no way, no way, no, no luck. Oh, she naked. <laughs> she naked, oh, oh, trouble don't break. <laughs> okay, so you don't want to marry a pastor, but I want to marry you. But inside my heart, I knew it was a test. Should I refuse to become a pastor? Whew, that was a challenge. But to tell you the truth, I considered rejecting being a pastor at, at that time. I, I was thinking if pastoring is going to be the only thing that is standing between me and this, and this girl, maybe I should just become an evangelist or something. <laughs> Maybe I should just become an itinerary teacher. Maybe I should just become a teacher and forget about pastor. <laughs> so I I I found with that idea a little bit. <laughs> and I was saying, my God, okay. I discovered that no, you know, if I do that, I will be in trouble with God. So, so how would I come out of this dicey situation? Huh? <laughs> I was sweating the way I'm sweating now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I used all my charisma and all my ability to convince her that princess, wait, you know, let me tell you what, this one, no, I'm not a, I'm not your usual pastor. I'm not your normal pastor. I, so I was trying to tell her all kind of story just to convince her that I was not the normal pastor. That I'm not a, you know, people are always afraid of deeper life kind of pastor, CAC, all kind of born again people, SU, you know, she was, so she, she told me at the end, I, was, I, said, I thought, okay, tell me your fears about pastor. She said, I want to enjoy my life. She was 21 at that point. She said, I want to enjoy my life. I don't want any pastor so that, because what she, she, told, said, she told me is this, I know that from where she's coming from in Nigeria, Pastor's wife cannot wear trousers. And she said, me, I like my trousers. I like my jeans. I mean, I'm going to wear anything I want. I said, okay. Apart from trousers, <laughs> apart from trousers, apart from jeans. <laughs> what is the problem again? Uh, she said, okay, uh, pastors don't have, pastor's wife don't have their freedom. Everybody will be controlling them and saying, as a pastor's wife, you have to be there, you have to be re responsible for this program or be responsible for that program. And that she doesn't want to even, even if she's going to be my wife, she doesn't want to even go anywhere and be responsible for anything. You know, she told me about what people do that a pastor's wife must uh, must lead the women's group or women's fellowship or women's something. Now she doesn't want to lead any woman thing, anything. she just wants to live her own life. She said, I want to enjoy my life. That's just the end of it. You know what? I'm sure some religious people and some pastors or some leaders here or some people here 
might think what I'm about to say now is crazy. But let me tell you my answer. You might not agree with me, but this is the this is the only way. <laughs> This was the only thing I could come up with, and I want to use this to tell to the girls as well that if 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 the guy really loves you, he should be ready to do anything to win your heart. Anyway, you know what I told her, and I was serious about this. So I told her this princess. In fact, I went on my knees, I knelt down before her, and I told her, princess, wait a minute. I swear before God. <laughs> And I'm giving you my word right now that I will never control you. Anything you are doing now, anything you want to do now, you are going to have the freedom to do it. The only thing is that if you want to go to a discotheque, I might not be happy about it, but if that will make you happy, if that's what you are doing now and you want to enjoy it and you enjoy your life, you want to enjoy your life, you are going to have all the freedom you want. Just don't sin, you know, so that it doesn't bring disgrace to me and the ministry. But you are going to have all the freedom you, you need to do anything you want. You want to wear trousers? Wear as many as you want. I don't care. You want to, you know, enjoy your life? Enjoy. You want to party? Please, just enjoy. Do anything you want. But I will not stop you. But I love you. So, uh, because I was sensing that I love this lady. How will I let her go just because of some religious something if she, you know so she said okay let's make a deal she said you have to promise me that you will never pull me and you will never ask me to be doing something in the church you know because she 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 i, I got born again when i was 19 but she grew up in church all her life so growing up in church made that to hate pastoring or anything to do with church work at all uh, altogether she she just she just <laughs> she was out of it she said she saw the way members of our church were criticizing uh the pastor's wife even our own family how they were talking behind the pastor and uh talking about the pastor's wife talking about the pastor and you know just things that are not fair things that are not just and uh just you know you know, that they don't treat pastors fairly in the church that she came from. So she had a very bad experience. And she said, I don't want to have anything to do with, you know, with church or with, uh, you know, ministry. If you want to do church, if you say God call you, go, go and do, you, he called you by, by himself. He called you by yourself. Go and do church. But if you want me to be your wife, only on the condition that I will not have anything to do with church. She said, I'm born again, so I will be coming to church, but just I will just sit down anywhere I want to sit at the back of the something. So make a good, don't go and put me in the front of seat and say I'm the pastor's wife or I'm go, I have to be there or I have to do this. I just want to live my own life and be a Christian and, you know, not have anything to do with your ministry or with the church. <sighs> love, love, love is a serious thing, my dear. Love is a serious thing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you guessed the answer. I gave up. I, I surrendered. I said, yes, yeah, princess. I even stood on my knees to prove to her that I was serious. <laughs> that we had a deal. <laughs> so the reason I'm telling you all this story is for you to know how adamant my wife was about the ministry. She was totally adamant about not having anything to do with the ministry. Nothing to do with ministry. And since I love her, nothing will ever separate us from the love of Christ. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. So I don't think that anything like that should separate me from the love that I have for her. So I said, don't worry, we have a deal. And uh, so that's the way we lived for the first six years or seven years of our life. But later on, she was going, you know, she would go and sing in the choir sometimes. She will, but later on, what happened was... <laughs> what happened later on was that she began to see, you know, so when I say you have to support your wife and help her to come to self-realization, uh, what I'm talking about is that um, you don't have to force her. 
you know, you don't have to force her. If I had forced my wife, we would have lost the family. We would have lost the family. We would have had a family. So the first four years she was doing a university. So for the first four years, I, I didn't touch her. I was just doing the ministry by myself, you know, giving my life. But later on, before she got pre before we got pregnant, she would go and sing in the choir, just join the choir, not as a lead choir, a singer or anything, or not as a leader, just sometimes at the back. Then she, we got pregnant. Then she went out of that again. So for another, that was four years, initial four years. Then, initial, then after we, that three years, she was. So I think for the first 10 years, because then we have our first child and the second. So for the first 10 years of our ministry, and our ministry started the same year uh, when our church started, I mean, when we married. So she, for the first 10 years, she would not uh, touch it. She, she kept to her word and I kept to my word. But things were happening in her life, even um, in, in, those, in, those, in those years. So I would not touch her. I would not tell her to go and do anything. I would not even tell her to go to church. But she was a Christian, so she would like to go to church, but just live her own life. And of course, she had her trousers and her jeans. <laughs> but she was not going to discotheque. She was not going to discotheque or party or anything. But she just, you know, didn't want the control. And she didn't want the religiosity. I told her, Pastor, I mean, Pastor Bosse, I mean, not Pastor Bosse, it's not I say Pastor Bosse, But I told her, you know what, Princess? I am the kind of man, the kind of pastor that this one, not the, I'm not your normal conventional religious pastor. That you will have your life, no problem. And but of course, to cut a long story short, you all know uh, that uh, my wife, she's my pastor right now. My wife is a pastor now. She's my pastor, and she is pastoring two churches. As a matter of fact, I'm here now doing this program, but she's in the church preaching. So she's pastoring our central church in Kiev now. In Kiev, yeah, we have 40, 40, 40 churches in the city of Kiev. And uh, out of those 40 churches, she's pastoring two of them. She's pastoring the English, uh, English language church. And she's also pastoring the local, the central church. And, you know, we have other churches, but she's pastoring those two. And, uh, and I am just like the, the man who takes the glory. So I'm not pastoring a local church anymore. I'm just going once in a month. I go to preach to the big church and I do leadership training for the pastors and for the leaders and, and things like that because, you know, I'm getting ready for Africa. So anyway, so she is the senior pastor of our church now. So what happened? I think let's now find out what happened. What happened is that uh, she told me uh, this, uh, this is her own story. This is her own story. She said, while I was... Uh, <laughs> When I was at the roadside and I was observing everything you were, do, you were doing, she said she was so sure that things were not going to work out. First of all, she didn't want a situation whereby this guy, he finished university, he fit, read journalism, and now it's time for him to finish his master's. Now it's time for him to go work. Instead of him to go and get a job, he said he's going to do pastoring. I don't want any family like this, so that will not be able to provide for the family. But it saw that everything I said came to pass. You see, that is very important for the lady. She said, everything you said, you kept to your word. Everything you said, you kept to your word. You said you are not going to have any problem financially. You did it. You were having a one-bedroom apartment before. When we were married, we got a bigger apartment, two-bedroom apartment. You know, you said, you were, I, I was, uh, I told, uh, she, she was concerned, she needed four years to finish her master's. You said we are not going to have children for the four years, you are going to wait. And I, we kept on that word, waited, no pregnancy, nothing, no pressure. Wow, this is different. You said you are not going to force me to do any ministry work. I, I said, you, I, uh, you should not touch me. He didn't touch me, to, <laughs> he didn't force me to do any ministry work. No, next one. I said I need I needed my jeans and my trousers. And I'm still wearing she's still wearing her trousers up to now. And so everything is coming to pass. But that is not even what pushed her and what made her to join the ministry. What what really spoiled her, what really was the turning point? 
the turning point was, she said, everything I said, because we had the vision in the church, I'll be sharing with her that we're going to have a thousand people in the church. It's going to be a thousand church. It's going to be, then we will have a thousand. I said, we are going to be a mega church. And it became a mega church. I told her all the vision I was having, every idea that I had, all the ideas were coming to pass. She said, what really touched her most was, she saw the way I was living every day. She, my wife told me that she had never seen a human being that is so much like Jesus Christ. She said, what she, what she knew as, a, as Christianity back in Nigeria, she said she just discovered that she was not, it was no real Christianity. She got to know real Christianity just by living with me. Even though she grew up in the church all her life, she was born again from 12 or from eight, 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 eight years old or something. But she said, it was when I got to know that I know who Jesus is, or who, God, who God is, and I saw Jesus. In fact, she told me one day that if not because I know you and you are a man and I know some of your weaknesses, that you go, at least you are sleeping with me. <laughs> she said, I would have thought that you are not a human being. I would have thought this is just either it's an angel or some, super, some superhuman being that is in human flesh. She said, I couldn't believe that there is a human being that is living with me. So just living with you alone was enough for me to want to become like that. I just want to become like, you, like him. I just want to become a minister as well. I've seen so much, so much. I'm seeing this miracle every day, you know, of just living with this man. I want to become like that. And then another point that really touched her and made her to take a decision to be a minister. She said she started seeing former drug addicts or just ordinary no Ukrainians and if you have lived in Ukraine before if you have lived in Russia before Russians are not Christians Ro I mean at that point at least Russians were not born again Russians were some of the most wicked set of people they are still some of the most wicked set of people you ever meet in your life I mean because of communism because of communism atheism Russians are not they are like they are no they are no human they are not human beings they are not no more hum humans. They are, they are, their ways are, is the way of wickedness. Russians are, so, but she saw me working with these people that we all thought they were not, they were, they were animals. They were not human beings. They were wicked. They were de demons personified. And she saw me converting them one by one. And I was not working with Africans or foreigners or black. These were Russians who were really getting transformed and burning. She said each time she sees all the changes and she's sitting with me, I'm his wife. Oh. She, he, I'm his wife. She's pinching herself. I'm his wife. I'm his wife. <laughs> so, and she started seeing the strategy and the wisdom that I was using to, to do all that thing. And she said, each time she sees, okay, for example, she will see one woman who was a drunkard yesterday or a man who was an alcoholic or drug addict. And in the next one year, my wife is observing and recognizing the same person that this person that was, was this bad is now a leader. Or another person who maybe was a, an atheist or uh, an unbeliever or somebody that didn't recognize God who came to church and come to destroy the church or to burn the church down. And in the next year, this person is leading so many people. So he was, she, was, she said, I was seeing so many transformations, so many changes. And I know in my mind that I'm better than some of these people. I mean, all these people were becoming respected people. They were becoming influential people. They were becoming successful people. And they were having stories. And here I am sitting, just coming to church. She said, no, <laughs> I'm not worse than these people. I'm not worse at all than these, these people that I'm saying. If this God could, if these people, if through my own husband, could become these people they have become, I'm not worse than them. I am going to, I be, I, you know, I'm going to begin to use these same principles. Something must happen with my life as well. I shouldn't just be coming to church to sit down and going back as, you know. So, but the point I'm trying to make is that the best way for a husband to inspire the wife and to help the wife to come to fulfillment is through inspiration, is through ex personal example, 
is true. It's not true pressure, not true um, force, not by force, but just to love her into it, love her into it, and show her an example, show her a good example. Let's start see the result. If she if she likes what she is seeing. <laughs> She will join and she might even excel. She might even do more than you. Now I'm not even pastor. She's the one pastoring. Now I'm just the one taking all the glory and enjoying the, pros, the, the journey. But she's the one doing it. Just lead by example. If you will fulfill, it doesn't have to be the same, the same calling. Maybe your husband is, your wife is supposed to be in another calling. But if she will see the way you are fulfilling God's calling, if she will see your example, how you are pursuing God, if you will show the example, how, you know, serving God is sweet, how pleasing God is wonderful, how you, it doesn't have to be in, in the pulpit. Maybe you are a medical doctor. Maybe you are, you know, a youth minister. Maybe you are a late woman minister or men's minister. Maybe you are, I don't, it doesn't matter if you are fulfilled in your own calling. If you know your own mandate, if you know what God has called you to, and you are doing it with so much joy and so much fulfillment, and your wife is seeing your lifestyle day in, day out, you know, she, you know, she will be left with no option than to join you and uh, maybe not join you, but she will also be encouraged to want to fulfill her own calling and her own destiny. So that's what we, that's what I, 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 I discover in my own family. Uh, but that's, but the idea is that no matter what tactics God will have you to use, help your wife, help your wife realize herself, help her realize her dream, help her realize her vision. Help her to come to fulfillment of whatever, you know, passion that she has that is living in her heart. And, and that's number one. Let me quickly leave that topic. I think I made the point already. Uh, the second point I want to make today, what your wife wants from you, is that, listen now. Are you ready for the second point? Serious? Really? Are you ready for that second point? Really? Men? I'm asking the men. You want to hear the second point? Do you really? Well, the second point The second point is every woman, including your woman, every woman, every woman, including your wife, every woman needs her space. Every woman needs her space. Every woman needs a freedom. And I know that is a challenge to a lot of men. I know that's a challenge to a lot of men. We don't understand. Most men don't understand the concept of honor. And we don't know that by letting our wives have their freedom is one of the ways, it's one of the greatest ways to express trust in her. And not just trust, but it's one of the greatest ways to express love to her. Don't let your wife ever, don't let your wife ever have a feeling of being in the prison yard. Don't you ever cause her to feel that she's in prison. Don't you ever play the role of a warden upon and over your wife. Don't let your wife ever feel constrained as to feeling that she cannot be who she is, she is meant to be. Don't ever make that happen. If you do that to her, if you do that to her, if you do that to her, you will actually be abusing her. Let me tell you, that is an abuse. 
You are abusing her because when you promised to marry her, when you told her that you loved her, when you told her that she was important in your life and she was important to you, you didn't make a deal with her. You didn't have a, make a contract with her that she would lose her freedom. You never told her that she would never have her own space. You will never tell her, you, I'm sure you never told her that she will never have her space, she will never have her place, she will never have the freedom to be who she wants to be and to, be, to live her life the way she wants to live her life. And as a pastor, I, I experience this all the time. As a pastor, I experience this all the time. Okay, for example, I had a lady who wrote me. She, wants to come, she wanted to come for HMT. She's in America. This is a Nigerian girl in America. Not even a girl. She's a woman. I don't know her, but maybe she, I don't know. Maybe she watches this program on her. So she wrote me and said, I plan to come to the HMT if my husband will release me. What is that? What is that? What is that about? I, I asked that, you, what do you mean? Do you, you don't have the money? Oh, it's not about the money. You mean you are working, you don't have the time? Oh, it's not about the time. Oh, maybe you want your wife, your husband to stay with the children. And No, we don't have a kid. If you don't have a, if you don't have a children, so why is it he won't let you go? If you need to grow, if you need this, oh, you know, as African women, we need to take permission, and I've tried it many times before. It will not. If he doesn't see, you know, if he doesn't know where I'm going, or if he doesn't, uh, he's not sure, he will, he will not allow me to go, and I cannot go without a blessing. I don't know where that is coming from. I'm sorry. I don't know where that is coming from. I don't know where that is coming from. Because, listen closely, before that girl became your girl, before that girl became your wife, you want to tell me she didn't have a life? You want to tell me she never had a freedom? <laughs> did, she, did she walk into a prison yard by marrying you? Did you admit her into, into a disciplinary uh, <laughs> incarceration? Oh, not that lady. Man, let me tell you something. You think you can control your wife from sleeping around or from committing adultery? Let me tell you something. If a woman wants to do it, she will do it and you will never even have an idea. But that is not the problem of women. Adultery is not the problem of women. Believe me. There is no way you can get a woman to commit adultery if the man is playing his role. There is just no way. A woman is not inclined to commit an adultery. You know, all those things that men are saying among themselves, believe me, is not true. Women are not as promiscuous. It is the men that are promiscuous. Especially if a woman is having a husband that she is satisfied with, if, a, if a, a, a woman's husband is meeting her needs, not just sexual needs, just her need as a friend, as a companion, as you know, just being a good husband, being there for her, if he's a real man and she is fulfilled and satisfied, she doesn't even notice any man again. It is, she, it's not about men. We are using our own standard to judge the woman. You know, women don't go ahead looking at men and say, oh, I want to sleep with her. I want to sleep. It is men who do that, not women. Women don't do that. Women are, you know, women, women, women are more pious than us. Women are more, uh, you know, they are, more, they are purer than women. So, so, you know, don't even suggest that to your wife. Why should you even... You know, make her to even 
think that she's not fully human? Why should you even make her to think that she has to be controlled? Why should you even suggest that to her that you might not trust her or you are not sure if you... Why should you even tell her she needs your permission? She's an adult. She went to primary school without you. She went to secondary school without you. She went to university without you. She was going to go to work without you. So who are you now? Are you the almighty God? <laughs> No, don't put that in your family. Don't let that come. You know, some people say, yesterday, somebody, or two days ago, when I mentioned this, somebody wrote and said, Pastor, but you say you must take care of, the, of our wives as a, as a father. Yes, but do that as a suggestion. Do that not as a control or permission kind of thing. You know, tell her your opinion, but let her make the decision in that sense. You know, tell her what you think, but give her the freedom and the liberty. Let her know she always she can always have her own freedom and she always have uh, as 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 a liberty. But don't put her under a constraint. But now the constraint and the the controlling spirit of you can't go there, you can't go this, you can't go there. That is one thing. But it's not even the one I'm talking about now. Let's talk about, I mean, that is just one aspect, sorry. That is just one aspect of freedom. But you know, you also need to give your wife a freedom and give her a space, even in your own house. There is nothing as terrible to a woman as to feel that she is not the owner of the house. You know, a woman must feel as if she's the, she's the owner of the home. A woman must be made to own the house. A woman must be made to, to own the home. And for her to feel as if she owns the home, you really need to help her. You need to help her. To, I remember when, like I told you people in the morning or yesterday, that my wife came down from Russia to come and join me. And, you know, I mean, especially when you are higher than her. Okay, can you imagine I was a journalist? I was on TV, national TV, working as a journalist. I was already famous. I, they were showing me on television. I had my own television, you know, uh, television program on the TV, Ukrainian TV, Russian TV, secular TV, not Christian TV. This is secular TV. I was a host there, you know, leading a television program. The whole country that not know about me. Then I was a pastor, you know, starting this church. The church was growing, one of the fastest growing churches. I had this, the, the apartment. I have all my staff. I have the drivers, the help. And all, you know, yeah, I was this so-called big man, right? And my wife is coming. She was just a student. So she, but we are married now. I noticed the first week and the first few weeks how she was stepping with care in the house, how she was taking her time and, you know, really being careful to get used to their rooms, to get to know the rooms, to get to know the, you know, the apartment, the furniture, where this is, where that is. And I knew that that was a barrier for her because she was coming from living in the dormitory, in the hostel, to be the... And I saw that she was living with me. She would go to the kitchen and find out where this is, how can I do this, where can we get this? But she was, at first, she was being careful not to overstep her boundaries, or what do you call it? She, she, she was being careful not to misstep or do some things wrong. And until I had to just, you know, throw her in it, in it and say, Princess, I don't have anything here. It's all yours. I mean, and this is connected to the next form of freedom that I'm going to talk about. For a woman to really feel that freedom, let me tell you what I had to do to really make my wife feel that she is the owner of the, of, of the home. She is the landlady here. She is the, she is the lord of this house. You must make... I'm, I'm trying to be careful how to say this. I'm trying to be careful how to say this, but I don't want the... You know, in, in, uh, not in Kiro. I think uh, somebody... I think it was uh, Shigo who wrote that African men are going to be asking for my head soon. But this, that, this one will really make them to ask for my head because... <sighs> 
Should I tell you before I, sh I shouldn't say? Maybe I shouldn't say. Maybe I shouldn't say. Or should I just say, maybe it could help somebody? But in my attempt and in my effort to help my wife to become, to feel herself as the owner of the home, as the owner of the house, I needed to help her to, you know, it's a terrible thing for your wife to be living with you in the same house and be thinking she is just being accommodated as if it's a privilege for her to be living there. As if, you know, you are the one who is the owner and she is just like the house. You don't want your wife to feel like the housewife. You don't really want your wife to feel as if she's, the, she's an housewife in that house. So for me to break that mentality, I think, and also she was coming from a house that is not so wealthy, not, 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 a, not a rich house. So she's never had such a big space to manage by herself. She's never... I don't think she's ever had, I mean, to be the owner and to be the head. So, what I needed to do, this is what I don't know if I should say or I shouldn't say, it because I don't want people to take it out of concept, out of content, I mean, out of context, and, but I still believe it. This is my own belief. And I don't think you need to believe the same thing or practice it. So, what I did is, Anytime, so I really wanted her to feel at, like at home and to feel as the owner, as you know, she's the landlady, she's the owner of the house. So I was trying to withdraw myself from the scene so that she would now be the one managing the whole thing. But I noticed that there is no way a woman will ever feel herself at home. There is no way she will, a woman will ever feel herself as the owner, the landlady of the home if she needs to come to me from time to time to ask for money, oh, I need to go to the market, can you give me this money? Or I need to go to the shop, uh, how, uh, this is how much I need, uh, will you give me $200 now, or $100 or $300? Uh, to me, that is just shameful, that is just an embarrassment. And that is one of the things that would never make her to feel as the owner of the house. That is what would never make her to feel as the landlady. So what I did, and I still do it up to now. For the past 22 years of our lives together, whenever I receive my salary like this, whenever I receive my pay and my blessing from sure, let's say this is my salary, as soon as I receive the salary, I am bringing it to her. I never opened, maybe I opened it just one month, but since we were married, I never opened my, my, my envelope one time. After I took the decision, I never opted today. I, I don't even see the envelope again. Before, I used to come and give her. But now, <laughs> I don't even see it. <laughs> the accountant and the, uh, the you know, the, the, all those people, they know who to give it to. So they just take it to her. I don't even see the thing anymore. The only thing I did is we sat down together and I told her that, Princess, you have the freedom, but let us make a policy. So we have what we call f f uh, family financial policy. And we'll talk about that maybe later on in, in future when we are going to be talking about uh, family budget and family planning. So we uh, came up with a policy that we both agreed to. So what, what I mean by policy is this amount of money will be going for God or to the church. This amount of money will be going for our future children that will come. This amount will be going for you. This amount will be going for me. This amount will be going to the family, to your family, and this amount will be going to your family. But everything is in your hand, princess. And my wife, she is very smart. She is very, uh, very organized. So, you know, it was even a safety for me. It was, it, it was even a big help for me because that way, I don't even need to be, because I, I am the loose type with money. I'm not really loose. I'm an Ijebu man, by the way. So I am very disciplined with money, but... I'm too compassionate. I want to help everybody, so I give money all the time. But, uh, but I am shrewd with money too. But since she is very, very organized, so I just knew that it's a blessing for me. So she's the one managing all the money, the budget, and everything. And uh, and so, but that gave her the total freedom. That gave her the absolute freedom, and she now became the owner of the house. You see, it is important to help your wife to feel accepted. It is important to help your wife to feel 
as if she's important in your life. It is important to help your wife feel as if she, she's not just visiting. She's not just going to be there and then you are going to wash out and see, you know, is she, you know, uh, is, is, is she going to be this or that? Is, no, no. Give enough. When you submit everything to her hands like that, when you, you know, let everything go and you just give her everything and, you know, it gives... It brings some confidence. It brings some trust. It brings some harmony into relationship. That, you, but for me, it's just a shame and it's a thing of embarrassment to have my wife coming to me and be asking for two dollars today, five dollars tomorrow, two hundred dollars tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and then maybe this one is not enough. Okay, this is the change. Take the change, and I say, okay, keep the change. Don't worry, keep the change. And okay, I want to, I need uh, underwear today, I need bra tomorrow, I need uh, masturbation day after tomorrow, give me this money, give me this one. No, I, 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 I'm not into that, I'm not into that, I'm sorry. I'm not into that, I'm not going to be into that, I'm not going to get involved in that, I'm not going to get involved in that. I don't, I'm not advocating that you should be giving your whole salary to your wife, you agree among yourselves. Because even though, despite the fact that I give my own old salary to her, we still have a policy, like I said. We have policy. So in that policy, every, we have joint account and we still have a separate account, individual account, depending on how much we have in the policy says should go to where. But talking about freedom, giving a woman freedom, that is one, this one I just mentioned now is one of the, pro, is probably one of the most important aspects of freedom that you want to give to your wife. Let me mention another aspect of freedom. You know, your wife must have the freedom for her self-development on a daily basis. Let her have a space in the house. Give her room to be alone sometimes. When, you know, we, you know, we, we sh we, you shouldn't even, especially this is a problem of the women sometimes, but the women are the ones who, who, who always want to, but as a man, also some men do that. You you are occupying a space all the time. She doesn't have time. She wants to do something. You are saying, "Oh, you are come, 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 come." Yeah. Ah, that could kill love very fast. So in the house, make sure that you give her a space. When she's busy, respect her. I'm not talking about when she's busy in the kitchen. No. I'm not talking about the kitchen busy or she's busy with the children. Those ones, that is not being busy. Give her some time to be busy for herself. Give us some liberty to have some time to herself. Don't just, you know, be dragging her from kitchen to bed and from bed to the children, from the children to bed again and all that. That is so frustrating for a woman. Don't don't let her life, don't reduce her life to, to children, bed, kitchen, bed, children, bed, kitchen, bed. Make sure you let her know that she has the freedom and the liberty. Give her that space whereby she could just be on her own studying and you are not going to that room and you are not even touching her or you just look and see that she's studying or she's reading or she's on her own or she's talking and you just leave her. You don't just say, ah, I'm here, or, uh, you know, and then she has to, to quickly drop the telephone and rush to you or quickly drop the book and say, oh, okay, and no, no. Let her know that, okay, how many more minutes do you need? Do you, uh, do you need two hours? Okay, but after, when you are through, please, uh, you can come to see me or, you know, let's meet. Or let's talk. Or, but, you know, honor her time. Honor her privacy. If the fact that a woman marries you doesn't mean that she, she has to lose her privacy. The fact that a woman marries you doesn't mean that she, she, cannot, uh, she cannot have a time to herself. She cannot have a solitude or just a time of, just her own time of meditation. Or her own time of alone. Oh, she wants to pray by herself. Okay, oh, why are you not calling me? Let's pray. Maybe she needs to just talk to God on her own by herself or, or you know she wants to study she, every woman or man needs to grow so give her that space that pace that pace give her that freedom and uh, let her have her space let her have her space have, have her space in the house okay then another thing is this uh, the final thing I'm going to talk about talking about freedom giving your wife freedom this was hard for me this was hard for me this one was hard for me, but you know what? We, we shall not all die, but we shall all change. <laughs> it, you know, it was hard for me, but um, I just have to count with reality. We have to count with reality. 
But this happened especially when my wife became more, much more busy as a pastor, and when she, she, you know, she became so busy and with the children and everything. You know, the daily schedule and program of the man is often different from the woman. Okay, can you imagine a woman uh, who wakes up in the morning to dress her children and take, and women are the ones who do that most of the time because, you know, uh, she, 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 she is dressing the kids and taking them to school or driving them to school or dressing them to school and then uh, she has to go to work or she has to do a lot of things or cook or do, do, clear the house or prepare or clean the house, you know. It's just crazy. The woman's schedule, I told me, just crazy. I, I personally think if a woman is having children and she's, you know, she, I, I think a woman should not, not work. As soon as she's on this stage at the time of, you know, having children, I think if she wants to work, she can, but I think we, a man should do everything for a woman not to work, especially when she's still, you know, you know, she's still growing. Because, you know, getting all those children to school, dressing them, waking up early in the morning and then going to clean the house. I mean, the whole day she's busy. So now, you know what happens? I come from work. I come from work. And, uh, and she wants to sleep. She wants to sleep. And I said, oh, okay, you want to sleep? And we have one bedroom. So, but I want to read. I want to read that time. Or I want to, okay, let me just tell you another example. You know, something is still the same thing, but can you imagine? Maybe that happens in your in your, in your own family as well. Uh, I sometimes I feel like having music on while I sleep because music helps me to sleep. But she cannot she cannot stand that music. She cannot stand the music. She can't stand it because she needs to sleep. She needs tranquility. She needs just a peace, peace of mind, tranquility, hundred percent. And most of the time, you know what the women do? We expect the man, the woman, to give in, to comp to compromise, and to just to just endure it. I'm sorry, I must have been guilty of that a few times. Not not even talk about music a lot. You so okay, she wants to sleep at ten o'clock. And then here you are, you are not yet ready to, to sleep. Because I like, I think my, most men do that. I like to sleep reading, so I want to be reading before I sleep. I want to read one chapter or two chapters or one book. And she wants to sleep. So the light is on. So you, the, your woman, who has been so busy in the house and all that, she wants to sleep and the light is on, that is totally crazy. Or you want to open the window, or she wants to open the window, I want to sleep. So those are areas where you have to come uh, into agreement about giving each other space, each other space. So uh, this was a, especially a big problem when we were in, a, in our apartment before we had this house. So in this house where we built, uh, we had to reach a compromise that if my wife is sleeping, if she's sleeping, I don't go into that room. She put off the light, I have to go ahead and look, go to another room and if you need to go and read a book, go downstairs, my brother. So I came to that conclusion myself that, you know what? To be understanding, don't put on that light. Don't put on that light. Go away. And that is freedom. And that is giving a lady a space. Don't put on the light. Don't wake her up. Don't open the window if she doesn't want it. Don't put on music if she if she really wants to rest. Um, give her space. Give her space. I, I don't know if any one of you understand what I'm talking about, but even in little things like this. So thank God we have a bigger house here now. So what we have done is that we have two rooms. Our room, our bedroom, is is adjacent to another room. So we have two bedroom into is into two so when she's uh she, for example in the morning i woke up at four o'clock in the morning i want to pray so i can just quickly step to, uh, tiptoe and go out to the next room to the adjacent room and then put on the light there so she will not be she will not wake up or she wakes up and she needs to go and take out the kids and i've just gone to bed 
So she also does the same thing, goes out instead of her putting on the light, instead of waking me up. Or, you know, things like that, you know. Uh, 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 you know, we need to learn to give each other space. And But because we are men, we kind of just bond do our way through and just say, you know, I'm the man. And so we are kind, we, most of the time we kind of think that the woman always has to retreat. The woman has to be the one to suffer. The woman has to be the one to, to endure, to endure the whole pain and, you know, but, you know, to really be a husband, to be a true faithful husband means to actually cover for her. To be a true husband means to be the head. We say we are the head. Being the head means actually going the hard way, going the harder way, coming to suffer. The Bible says that anyone that wants to be the first should be the last. So being the head of the family is actually being last and stepping back and say, okay, as the head, okay, let me just retreat. Let me give you that freedom. Let me give you that liberty. You know, being the one to step aside, being the one to, you know, to, to, to be the stronger one and to just prove your headship by serving her. And, and since she is also the weaker vessel, you know, always know that you cannot begin to argue with the weaker vessel. You cannot begin to, you know, bond your way through with the weaker vessel. She, if she is the weaker vessel, you know, you know, step down for her. And if you are the one that is strong, if you are the head, you are the one that is strong, then what the, the best thing that a person that is really strong does is the, the real strength is the ability to control strength. Real strength, real power is the ability to control power. It, it, when you are powerful and you are strong, you don't begin to use your power to make your own way and to oppress other people and push them. No, no, no. If you, the ability to let that power down, to put it down, to, 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 so, to submit that power, to, you know, to use that power to uplift, to use that power to, 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 to withdraw that power, to use it to rather, you know, you know, empower another, that is where the real strength and real power is. So, so when I talk about liberty, giving freedom to your wife and letting her have a space, you know, it, it goes from the bathroom to the bedroom to the kitchen to the you know to the to self education self development it goes to permissions you know church events traveling you know it it's it, giving a woman freedom touches on everything what was the time by the way what is the time Ooh, hmm, okay <laughs> my time is long gone my time is long gone Mm -mm -mm. Well, I don't know if you have shared the link already. Have you shared the link to this uh, program? Please, let's go down and look into the share button or look, find a button under your video. You should have, uh, you should have uh, a link there for, for, for sharing. So let's share it and write some comments. Let's share the link and write some comments so that uh, people will be able to know what to expect in this program. Please write some comments and, uh, and share the link. Let me read what you are all writing. Let me read what you are all writing. Does anybody here know the Moronkejis? Because they have not been coming. The Moronkejis, maybe they don't know that we're on another platform. The Moronkejis and the Christians. Uh, I think it's Kik, uh, is it Kik? No, no, it's not Kike Loma Moron Keji, yes. And then we have, uh, Titi, is it Titi uh, Christian? Patrick and uh, uh, Nikki, Nikki Christian. If you know them, will you call them up and let them know that we're on another platform here so that they don't miss on these stations? Anyway, here we are. Uh, gift blessing, Amos says, a sign of respect for we Africans. I don't. I don't get that. Uh, maybe I missed something. Jennifer Ashibe says, Pastor, I'm going through this situation now, walking on shells, so not to offend my in-law. Uh, why should you live with your in-law? I don't think you should be living with your in-law. Your in-law should get her own house, or you should get your own house. Tim Dokon Adeniron said, Lord of the house, say it, we are getting delivered. <laughs> uh, Joseph Oyewole is back. Wow, thank God. 
scripturally the wife owns the house she is the chief executive of the house well that's what i'm trying to say that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> she go she go you seem to be excited these days especially you know this last series uh you seem to be to be your, to be back to your old self okay she go say you are getting to that sore point oh <laughs> Gladys Unshang said, Pastor Sunday, you are the best. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Unkiro Ojibadu says, uh, she, my wife holds the bank account. She holds the purse, right? Ufo Uma said, on point, sir, reducing her to a beggar is not a good thing. Of course, she can't be free to say she, it is a house if she is not in charge. Yep. Fumi Jeboda said, he is not a Nigerian man. <laughs> He's not a, this is not a, Pastor Sunday is not a Nigerian man, Walahi. <laughs> Walahi in Awusa means, you know, I think it means truly, truly or so. <laughs> Dr. Adela, your Niger men don't want to hear this. Oh. Ah, well, we have to raise another generation of Nigerian men. We have to raise uh, the generation of enlightened men, kingdom men. We are no more Nigerians or Ghanaians or South Africans or Europeans or white. Or We are now uh, kingdom citizens. So as kingdom citizens, we need to just apply the kingdom principles now. Tim Dotun said, this is financial liberation to the wife. Or, I don't think it's financial liberation to the wife. I think it's, it's peace of mind for your family and it's joyful family for yourself, for everybody involved. Kemi Omo Adeye, Omo Adeye Mo. You are the first man I know that hands over his wages fully to the wife. Wow. Wow. You know, I don't know. Would it, would it, that's why I was, you know, I didn't know if I should share that with you guys or not. But, you know, I've, I've shared it anyway. I let the bird out of the bag. Bless Indra Odia, he says, Shy, our, our men are going to get angry and vexed because of this third point. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know. Everybody could decide. Let every family decide for themselves. Let every husband and wife. But it shouldn't just be the man who decides. They should decide together. She said, African men are crying now for this one. <laughs> Tim Dotun says, wisdom from above, let her have the 100% control. She is still yours anyway. Yeah, she's your wife, so why should you hold her back? Boss said, fire you as a pastor, an average Nigerian man will never agree with you on this financial policy, okay? They would rather prefer it the other way around. Wow. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Well, <sighs> Princess Juliet Ihama said, you are very nice and funny, sir. <laughs> Ufoma said, some men will raise... There some men would rather take their wife's salary under any guise, especially as the head of the house. And the opposite. I, I think that uh, my wife, I don't know if she has money or she doesn't have money or if she has. I never asked that. We've been married for 22 years. I never asked my wife for her money. And I never ask her if she has money or she doesn't have money or if she's getting money from anywhere or she doesn't have. It's her own business. I'm the head of the family. I told her to marry me. So I never asked for her own income or for, I never I know how much she makes. It is all about uh, the head of the family, what the head of the family makes. Tim says, the secret of trust, harmony and confidence is freedom for your wife, right? Formula Yagakwe said, Pastor, we women don't ask men money again as we have our jobs. But if they give, 
we will take and is the responsibility of a man to give. Thank you for enlightening them, sir. Gift, uh, gift, blessing. Say, men are not talking again, though. <laughs> I can say to Thompson, this is a man saying, all oh, you women are marrying men now. Your time will come on next week. Next week, I'm going to address the women. <laughs> that, that is when men will talk. <laughs> so men are waiting, they are waiting, reserving their comment for next week. <laughs> right now, men have gone to solitude. <laughs> Joseph Oyewale said the wife must have the wisdom for her self-development. Give her liberty to improve herself. Yep. Lie your shouts, Emmanuel. Pastor, thank you. In fact, my heart is glad for this third point. Although we practice this in our house, but those men who can't practice this are also are only selfish, self-centered, and do not really love their wives. If the man truly loves the woman, honor and respects her, he won't see putting her in charge of the finances as a big deal. Yeah, I think you're right. Ekonsami said, this is a man's message. Why are you women watching and listening to the whole woman? have to let loose the 1,000 words. <laughs> it's not 1,000, it's 20,000. <laughs> Paul says, we are listening attentively. So the men say they are listening. <laughs> Jennifer said, thank God for Pastor Sunday. Esther said, exactly, space to convert a time, retreat with God and to grow and develop. This is the blossoming process, yeah. Oh, look at you. They say she is doing more work as an administrator. You will have no stress to explain why the salary could not take care of all the requirements. Women are better managers and administrators. That's a good thinking. That's what oh, look at you. They think. Elizabeth Ali, yes, oh, me and my son alone sometimes I run to the park screaming and come back home laughing. <laughs> Uh -huh. Apostle Tim says, I'm beginning to appreciate women more than the way I used to. Women, you are too much. Well, revolution is starting. Changes are coming. Ufu Oma said, I'm blessed. I have so much to be thankful for listening to you, Pastor. Louis Abraham said, Pastor, I support you 100%. Yukaria says, I am so proud of my late husband because he gave, me, he gave my mom a well-organized woman the opportunity to manage the finance and, of course, his salary. May God bless all men who honor their wives and family. Wow. Apostle Tim says, compromise. Here we are, an African man has been brainwashed that women have to give in. So we enforce our rights against theirs. God have mercy on us. Yeah, and not just have mercy alone, we've got to change. We've got to change that order. Shari says, so true, Pastor. Oh, go, oh, good Lord. What is so true? I don't understand what you're saying, Shari. Ekun Sami said, do you call the woman weaker vessel? Pastor, it's not always so. They are not weaker vessel. Well, there is an understanding. Keep on listening to me. You understand why they are weaker vessel. I will explain that one day. Olukayo, they said, my wife had to tolerate me for close to 15 years before I decided she can keep her own separate room. She prefers a cool and airy room while I prefer to sleep without fan or AC. It was a great sacrifice for her for 15 years. Can you imagine? 
because a man is a by force, by force. <laughs> but thank God you at least gave him, you came to the understanding later on after 15 years. <laughs> Ufoma said, I fell asleep last night listening to you, Pastor. How my kids went to bed and all. I did not know. <laughs> Thank God my husband was home. He just allowed me to sleep and I woke up to a quiet house. Brilliant. <laughs> ah, okay. Shari is saying, Pastor, please don't look at the time. <laughs> I already looked. <laughs> Joseph Oyewale said, the Bible says, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself to her. Being the head means you are able to lay yourself down for your wife and your family. Brilliant. Real strength is the ability to control power, right? Margarita, oh, Pastor Sunday, it is just a dream for every woman to have a man like you, like you described. Do, do they exist nowadays? Well, they don't exist by themselves. They don't exist by themselves. They exist by training. So uh, what we have to do is that we have to train them and we have to give them solid Christian uh, gospel kingdom training. So uh, the idea, the, what makes the difference is training. So if you train them well, they will become like that. And in your country now, we have the missionaries there, Pastor Dima and, and the wife, they are like that. All the men that have gone through my training, if, if they are my disciples, they are like that. Eric said, thank you, sir. You are the best. Thank you. Unkiru said, we listen with both ears and mouths open. Eukarya said, pastor, you are simply the best. Thank you. Uh, Shari says, wow, pastor, you say unconditional love does not exist, but your love to your wife looks pretty unconditional to me. Oh, no, it's not totally unconditional. <laughs> She's doing her part too. Truly, truly, the humble heart will conquer the world. Your humility and imitation of Jesus was so inspiring to her. She had no other choice than to follow and submit to you as well. What a wonderful synergy. I pray that I will have that kind of marriage one day. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah, for you to have that kind of marriage, prayer is not enough is not enough. You need to pray, yes, but you also need to go through training for yourself. And that man that you are going to marry has to go through sound, sound training. <laughs> Princess Juliet Ihama said, true word, sir. The men are in trouble. <laughs> they are not in trouble. They should just, they should just walk in understanding. That's all. Uh, Ufoma Nigoro said, thank you, Pastor, for opening our e eyes to... Uh, the more to, to this truth, our families can only get better. I love you, sir. God bless you. Ufoma said, uh, I've, I invited Nika Kristen. Okay. She go, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the house. Ah, no, make you don't bring that one, no. If you present that, you are going to, <laughs> you are going to, <laughs> okay. Grace Akande said, I'm enjoying you, doctor. <laughs> In case she or she officer say, when a man is accepted and gives a space and given a space, she gives all she is to make her household and husband the best. Yes, Eric says every message in, is new and packaged for the for life changing. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Eric says, sir, you are really from another world. Yeah, I think probably God brought me here to Russia and prepared me in the wilderness. And that's what God told me when I said I was going to Bible school. He said, uh, no, you have been prepared in the wilderness. So I think probably God is preparing me. He prepared me for this past 30 years in his own wilderness so that I would uh, hid me from what is happening 
in Africa so that when I go back to Africa, I'll be able to come with another concept and we'll be able to correct those things that need to be corrected at home. I think uh, these things, you know, God has to teach you differently from where you are coming from for you to be able to have uh, impact. Michael Afolabi said, thank you, sir. I'm doing what you just said about giving us space because we met to have prayer time, but she said she's tired. I left her in the room while I'm here with you converting the time. I'm blessed. B blessings. Wonderful. Wonderful idea. She, Sandra, said, you are truly amazing, Pastor, and there is no pastor like you, sir. You are just the best. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Kate says, the truth has to be told. Anyone who has ears, let them hear. Molly says, Pastor, every day with you is enjoyment. I love you too much. <laughs> you are the best. Thank you. Abraham, great. I learned that from 2007 and hand everything over to my wife. It has worked like anything as I have prospered since. Yeah, you see, that's a confirmation for you guys. That's Pastor Abraham, great from London. Esther Kuganja said, many times, Pastor, these teachings are precious. Gift blessing, Amos, said, thank you, my mentor. You are, you have broken many protocols. <laughs> Louis Abraham said, Pastor, I'm a core Nigerian man, but I have your mindset 100%. You see? So I'm not the only one like this. My pastor here in America is from Delta State, but he pays all his salary into the wife's account and does not know how the wife spent the money, but he trusts her. You see? You see? You know, there are men. There are men out there. Thank God. <laughs> Joseph said, we appreciate your openness on this platform. You are so different and your experience is so unique. Your grace is unparalleled. Your wisdom is not of this world. <laughs> the truth needs to be told. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Victor David Shuk, Slava Gospodus, Pasiva, Slava Bogu, Daragoy. Shola Lamudi said, if the woman is happy, everyone else in the home will be happy. Yeah, thanks for the great insight, Pastor Sunday. Josephine Onabo said, I always, I always want a wife is, I always want a wife to be in charge of finances. The home will run. Anytime a wife is in charge of the finances, the home will run smoothly. Okay. Jennifer Ashebe, thank you, Pastor, for what you just said to me about living with the in-laws. My husband feels he's helping and I've always told him that's not the way to help your relative. If you want to help, let him give them money a little bit, but they should live separate. You don't live together with another family member. Louis says, so we still have very noble Nigerian men remaining, and when I got, uh, get married, I got married, my wife will know she is married to a king. Oh, when I get married, she is not married yet. Okay, when I get married, my wife will know he's married to a king. Yeah, Louis, 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 Louis. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, Louis. I need your support because, you know, we need more men to talk like that. We need more men to talk like you. Thank God. Thank God I'm not alone. You are not leaving me alone, no, Louis. Oh, look at me at the ocean. Say, when you are in charge of the finances, you actually spend less. He's talking about the woman. Spend less because you feel responsible. The truth is, it's more liberating for the men. I have the privilege, and sometimes I like the other way. Uh, Alfina, by faith, said, I pray my future husband is watching. <laughs> I pray my future husband is watching this, uh, Father God. Yes, Alfina, you've got to pray that God will give you husband from this platform. <laughs> you've got to get a husband that has been trained by Pastor Sunday or that has been listening to Pastor Sunday's teachings. <laughs> Abraham Great said, it's best to have joint accounts and men should not have the card to that account. <laughs> the woman should pay all the bills in the house and take care of the family. The man should go make the money and rest in the peaceful home. Wow, that is tough, Pastor, Pastor Great. Brilliant. <laughs> Kate uh, Imoedeme said, the truth has to be told. Any man who has ear, let him hear and make a 370 degree turn around. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for this enlightenment. You are loved, sir. Thank you. 
mo dupe mati mi loju this is rich pastor this words of wisdom for our men thank you <laughs> uh for love said what a night is enough to be quiet for now <laughs> meditating <laughs> That's a man talking. <laughs> he said, what a night. It's been a long night. <laughs> it's enough to just be quiet for now and meditate. <laughs> well said, well said. <laughs> that is Apolabi Victors. Niyi Oluwa Shola said, money is just a tool to achieve the goal of the family. It gives a man peace of mind if the woman controls the money, for sure. The problem comes when the woman doesn't have good financial management. Well, well if the woman doesn't have good financial management and you both know that, then it will be wise for you not to be, not to, it will be wise for your family that she is not the one controlling it. If the woman doesn't have good financial management or man, financial sense, then the, man, the other partner has to control the money then. You, I mean, you don't see a dish or a hole in front of you and go and jump inside it. If you know that the woman has problems spending money, too, spending too much money, then you have to give it to the other partner that is more shrewd in that sense. Okay, but Nii says, I had more peace when my wife manages the finances of the family. She doesn't ask me for money when all the money is with her anyway. Yeah, that's good. Fola Shade says, you are a proper man, sir. You can't compare yourself with the chicken men that we see around. <laughs> Bless Indra. Say, we are waiting. We love the truth anytime. Okay, for the woman. Next week, I'm starting with the woman. <laughs> Galina said, good teaching. Who has ears? Let him hear. Gift blessing. Say, this message will be very good for bad. They give for all men. <laughs> uh -huh. Louis Abraham, God bless you dearly, my pastor, for being such a blessing to us. Julia Fortune, God bless you, pastors, Adelaja, for this teaching. More marriages are now blessed. Uh, Tim Dotun, every godly man should see this information as a revolution. Unkiru Ojibadu, you must not necessarily keep separate rooms to give each other space. There is more to that. Adeola Disu said, you are a very rare man of God, sir. You are truly blessed and great. We are truly blessed and grateful for this platform. Thank you. Gladys said, thanks, Pastor. Men need training, sir. Victor Oshia, Victoria Oshia and Nisha. Thank you, Pastor. Women need this too. Some of us will take it for granted. Some of the women cannot be trusted with money as well. Fumi Jeboda, wow, all the glory to God and thanks, sir, for being a yielding and useful vessel. Thank you. Ufo Omar says, I agree, sir. Thank you. Thank God for you, Pastor. Pearl David, thank you very much for all these teachings. Me and my boss are talking about God now because she heard me laugh out loud, laughing at the discotheque comment, you are an awesome man with uh, an awesome wisdom. Thank you, Pearl. Tim Dotun said, I believe that, sir, you are just like Joseph. Please, sir, we need you to come home to Ijebode, Macedonia, and help us. Okay. I'll be back in Nigeria, and when I come to Nigeria, Ijebode is not going to be left out for sure. Uh, Kofi John says, by the way, Tim Dotun, if you are from Ijebode, then you should know Idomila now. You know I'm from Idomila. My father is from Ejebode, but I'm from Idomila proper. I claim Idomila. You should know Idomila. Tell me if you know Idomila or not. Kofi John Accra, Ankara said, Thank you, Pastor. Women need training. God bless you you and your family. Thank you. Lalona Debayo, thank you very much, Pastor, for another great family principles again tonight. And I'm making progress more in my marriage. Great. Wonderful. Formula your agape says, Amen, 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 Amen. God's purpose to prepare you for Africa will not be hindered in Jesus' name. Imagine all our children are useful in the Western world while their mother's motherland is suffering. But if peace reigns, then they will uh, be happy to visit or 
convince them to move there for business. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Shinwei, Pastor Sunday, you are enjoying the love vi vibes from the ladies, Abby. Enjoy it, Jerry. You are a man with a difference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Esther said, let the message sink in. Samuel Emerald said, long time, sir. Wow, it's a long time. I've not seen you for some time now. I was actually asking from Unkem, where did you disappear to? Lalon Adebayo said, all married men on this platform this week are blessed to receive these messages and our marriage will make progress and move forward to a greater speed. Men, you will enjoy your home as you embark on this kingdom principle. Thank you, Pastor. Joseph Oyewale, the time is so slow and the ladies are enjoying this so much. Shy, men will wait for next week. <laughs> yeah, for men, I'm going to talk about the ladies next week. So this week is talking to the men. Next week is talking to the ladies. About next week, Tuesday, I think, or Monday night, we are going to come back. We are going to come, go back to the other platform, uh, the other platform, the public page from Monday night, Monday night. Tim Dotun say, very well, sir. I know everywhere in Idomila. Wow. I know your family house. Wow. I have to come and build another family house, isn't it? So I'm coming back to Nigeria and we are not going to forget Nigeria and we are not going to forget Ijebu there in Idomila. We need, I, I don't just need to build another family house. I need to build uh, another, another... Anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow morning. I'll be back tomorrow morning. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.